my inner Fred has a lot to answer for. If you don't know who Fred is, he's the slightly less good looking caveman version of me. Turns out he's also partly the reason why we get fat and lazy. It's all to do with ketosis, don't you know? And no, ketosis is not some kind of dance the kids are all doing. It's actually a metabolic state that our bodies enter which can help us lose weight. The science goes something like this. Our bodies run on two basic types of fuel, carbohydrates and fat, and we get these from the food that we eat. Carbohydrates come in the form of sugars, starches and fibres found in many fruits, grains and vegetables, and is the fuel that our bodies will try to use first. Our modern diet is full of simple carbohydrates such as potatoes, rice and bananas, but also more processed ones found in bread, pasta, cakes, chocolate and beer. When there are no carbohydrates available, or when they're in limited supply, the body will turn to its secondary fuel source, fat, and that includes the job lot stored in the old middle age spread. So the logic follows that if you can reduce the amount of carbohydrates you consume, your body will start to burn that fat and you will lose weight. Now this has actually formed the basis of countless diets dating back literally centuries. Remember the Atkins diet? Yeah, I'm still having nightmares about it. The keto or keto diet takes this idea one step further. It reduces the level of carbohydrates or in some cases eliminates them completely so that the body is forced into using fat as its main fuel source. When it does this, the liver starts to produce energy molecules called ketones that are used to fuel the brain. This entire process is called ketosis and the resulting diet ketogenic. So that's the language all sorted, but where does my inner Fred come into all of this? Well, living when he did, there were no refined carbohydrates. Basically, Fred had to eat his burgers without a bun or fries, and they probably weren't even burgers, just slabs of woolly mammoth meat between two pieces of more woolly mammoth meat. All in all, Fred's diet was pretty healthy. Fast forward 10,000 years or so and you get to us. Now, as much as having things like the internet, aeroplanes and Simon Cowell makes us think that we're modern human beings, our bodies are no different to Fred's. We're not really designed to eat the processed carbohydrates in most of our food today, which is why many of us, including me, are overweight. Advocates of the keto diet claim that it's the perfect way to lose weight. Not only do you lose weight without hunger, but it increases your energy levels and sharpens your mental awareness. Some even claim that it turns you into a 24 by 7 fat burning machine. So how does a keto diet work in practical terms? Typically it means consuming 75% fat, 20% protein and only 5% or less of carbohydrates. So eating more things like meat, vegetables, eggs, cheese, olive oil and nuts and fewer things like bread, potatoes, pasta, rice and fruit. Some have even called it the butter and bacon diet due to its emphasis on fat. Now, I was always led to believe that being in ketosis, or at least severe ketosis, was a bad thing because it forced the body to utilise another of its fuel sources, the muscles. And indeed, I've said this in a couple of my other films. Otherwise known as starvation mode, this was particularly bad, as once the person started eating normally, the muscle mass that had been lost was replaced by fat that was very hard to lose in the future. But it appears that science and anecdotal evidence seems to back up all of these positive claims. People are genuinely losing weight by following a keto diet. They don't feel hungry, they have more energy, and they feel a lot more alert. 
It all sounds great. But like most things in life, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. When starting the diet, many people experience what they call keto flu, a period of headaches, nausea and fatigue as the body adapts to the reduced carbohydrate intake. As your body becomes acclimatized, you can also suffer from gastrointestinal issues, ranging from constipation to diarrhea, but these are all short term. Many critics claim that keto diets don't really work in the long term, as most people will regain the weight within 12 months, and more seriously can actually be unhealthy, leading to muscle damage, including to the most important muscle in the body, the heart. Now obviously I'm no doctor, I'm just some fat bloke that rides a bike, so there's no point looking to me for nutritional or medical advice. All I'm doing here is just paraphrasing the various information that I found about the keto diet and presenting it to you so that you can decide for yourself if you need to do further research into it. I'll put my hands up now and say that I personally have not tried it, but I have heard from several people that are following it and they appear to be getting great results. For what it's worth, even a lamppost with learning difficulties can tell you that if you reduce your intake of food, any food, you are going to lose weight. I personally think there's no quick and easy way to shed a few kilos. Regardless of which diet you follow, it's going to boil down to hard work and willpower. Thanks for watching.